Welcome back. This is episode five. Hey, I can't believe we've got to five. I thought I would have got sick of it by bloody three and packed it in, but we're doing really well. People are loving the vids and we're having so much fun putting them together. So I just followed a fly. Uh, keep throwing in your comments and uh, questions because you love answering them and it's good to hear the feedback. So anyway, this episode, we're going to Steep Point. We're at the useless loop turn off right now. We're packed. We've left the van at Hamlin Station. So this is where we're leaving the van before we go to Dirk Hartog. This is a place called Hamlin Outback Station Stay. So awesome spot. As you drive in, I think we'll stay here on the way back because it's bloody beautiful. Heaps of quirky like buildings, camp kitchens, really well done. And the campsites are all really well laid out. So 14 bucks a night to leave your van here. Uh, and the office is just there, so it's nice and safe. You just put the hitch lock in, chuck the alarm on. Uh, and we'll be out of here. So first time on a trip, babe. What are we taking this time? <laughs> we're taking our soda stream. Joking, we're, are you? No, hey? we're more over on Fraser Island. I just remember, and it's so hot, and I just remember I was tonguing for a spritz bloody water. Tonguing. Oh, I was so desperate for one. And remember, we bought a bottle of soda water over there for like five dollars. That's like just a one point two five. Yeah. Ridiculous. Yeah, well, so I was like, Lucky we got plenty of room, mate. But do you know that this doubles because I can put a bit of um, of our diet cordial in and vodka, and I've got a drink. <laughs> so Always about that? the grub. Is there an old wine out there? <laughs> no. <laughs> Coming, I'll show you the rough plan what we're doing. So, at the entry point here, there's a couple of signs that tell you where you're going. For us, at the moment, we're over here, right? At this useless loop road access somewhere in here. We're going in here, all the way up. A steep point up here <coughs> and we're camping around here which is the ranger station you'll pick us up tomorrow come across here and then we're going to fang it all the way we're going to start at the top of the island which is turtle bay uh they only allow one camper at a time in there and we couldn't get in apart from tomorrow night but it's mint weather and i think it's a good way to start we'll kick off up there explore the top end of the island come back camp at Withdale point come down explore this and then spend the night at the homestead camping and then we'll camp at cape ransonet before the barge out on the way home. So, anyway, pretty keen, eh? It's gonna be a mad trip. <coughs> if I can get rid of these flies, we should have invested in some fly nets, I think. But uh, good fun, good times, good forbian, good adventure. It's gonna be a sick trip, eh? Can't wait. Here's the start of the dirt. Doesn't look too bad. It looks like it's been fairly well graded, but it's gonna drop me tires. I'm gonna go down to 25 PSI because I know this road can get pretty corrugated. And once it gets a bit sandy, I can drop down a bit further. But this is what I use, if you've seen it before, just a quickie tie deflator, but I'll give you a hot tip. What I used to do when I'd take my valve cover off, I used to put it in my mouth. And then uh, it was only a week or so ago, there was like some random dog walking through the campsite and he cocked his leg and pissed right on the valve stem on one of my wheels. And I'm like, Ugh, I'm never put one of them in my mouth again. <laughs> anyway, let's drop these tires to 25. Two, three. Mm -hmm. Another wicked spot to check out on your way to Steep Point or back out is the amazing Tamala station. Justin will whack in some footage now. But we've stayed at the huts before. I've heard tea tree's amazing. Definitely whack it on your list because it is spectacular Tamala station. It's epic. We loved it. And hot tip, it's only 35 k's from the turn off. Yes, it's a bit of rough road and corrugations, but nothing you can't get your van to. We towed our on-road van <laughs> here bloody couple of years ago and it made it no dramas. And uh, mate, you will not get a better beachfront site with it's the amazing. caravan in like, tow. Yep. It is epic. I'm sort of spilling it out, haven't you? I know. We were tempted to leave it at Tamala, which we could have because that road was pretty good. That's fine, mate. Yeah. It's no dramas. Ten bucks a week to leave your van in there. You can go and day trip out or camp out at Steep Point. Yeah, pick and then, um, up and yeah. go into Tamla. Yeah. Go in there, grab the key, go out, go to a few different sites that Tamla has to offer. They like, even pick up free bloody firewood in there. How good's that? So 100 k's down the track is where you come to the entry station, right? For the Edel National Park. It's 13 bucks, entry fee. Uh, you just pop it in an envelope here and chuck it in the lockbox. There's another map here that tells where it is. Mint spot. And uh, mate, the road's been pretty good. I can see it would be pretty bad at times, but uh, we've been sitting on 80 to 100 k an hour and the corrugations haven't been too bad. So 
I reckon a hot tip is it's a fine like line between uh, tire pressures and speed. So you got to make sure your tire pressures are down to suit your vehicle, and you got to make sure you do the right speed that it's like a, a nice soft ride, you know. So us sitting at 80 to 100 is a 10 times easier on the gear than sitting on 60. So we got 25 psi all around, I'm sitting on 80 to 100 k an hour, and it's pretty bloody smooth sailing. So. Righto, false entrance that way. Another good fishing spot. I've met a bloke before. Him and his mates go there on a mad trip. Catch huge Spanish mackerel off the cliffs. 43 k's to steep point. I'd love to do a boys trip out here at some stage and just spend a couple of weeks out here. But I've got about five nights at the most because the squeeze doesn't like been away from the caravan. So to make the most of it, we're going to steep point. Dirk Hartog. No false entrance this time. Okay. This is where corrugation stop and it gets a bit sandier heard about this but um, you've got to go over a bit of a sand dune in a hill to get in here this one here I love this check this out eh? no shooting and straight up there's bullet holes all through the side <laughs> anyway engage and remain in full drive maximum tire pressure 20 psi so I'm guessing that gets pretty soft and um, how's it at 20 now so I think I'll just leave it like that and see how we go Whoa, so then she gets pretty rough pretty quick, eh? Sandy, bit of a steep dune, and lumpy as. Like, look at this. we still got 40 k's to go, dude. I know. Hey? <laughs> <laughs> I'm holding my Jesus bar. Ah, so I didn't make it too far up this hill. I've got to stop. 20 psi is too much for our rig. I'm going to drop it down to 15, and we'll cruise back up. It's starting to get pretty soft here, eh? Check this out as you come over this last dune. Oh my lord! What do you think of that, babe? Me, I think it's amazing. I'm really classic. <laughs> She's classic. This last 20 k's has been pretty rough. Oh man, that is that's Dirk Hartog over there. That's where we're going. Look at that water. Oh, that is off its head, mate. Oh, can we stop so I can appreciate this? Oh, fully. We can stop here. Look at this. I get right over here. Oh, I won't. Oh. <laughs> this is some specky stuff, mate, eh? Look at that. We got no wind, no swell. We have five days of this. Wow, man. So, before you get to Steep Point, you'll come past the turn off to a little ranger station. You gotta drop in there and check in with him and pay your fees if you haven't already and he's a good bloke he'll give you a few tips I said um give us your hot tip on fishing I just want to catch something he goes put a line in the water I'm like, no no like I want a tip he goes that's a tip he reckons the fishing's that hot wow. all you have to do is put a line in the water I don't believe it I've had, I haven't caught nothing in ages but anyway that's it go up to steep point and then we'll come back and uh, camp up at the barge landing site we'll give you a look around next point is the westernmost point on the Aussie mainland Steep point. Oh, yeah, we finally made it. Yes. Check it out. This is where we are going to stay tonight. Look, we just step out into the ocean. I can't freaking believe it. Look at it. <laughs> All right, come for a look around. We're just going to drop the swags off here, set them up, and then we're going to head up to steep point for a look. What color is that? I don't think I've ever seen that before. Crystal bloody clear. Oh, man. And it's, oh, here's the temp. It's like perfect, this, the water temp. Oh, my God. Oh, oh, this is magic. Oh, and look how cool it is. I can't believe you bloody talked me into only doing four nights, mate. Far out. Right here on the beach, the barge pulls in like just here somewhere, so we'll just have to get up in the morning and drive straight on. Man, this is just insane. People camped all the way up and down here. Easy drive, super calm. This is just epic, hey? Oh. What a sick campsite, mate. I can't wait to get over here. That, um, that's the car talk over there. It's gonna be mint, hey? Far out, it's gonna be good. Only a K 
couple of k's from Steep Point now, and we are over this side. We've just got phone service, so I'd love to bang onto it. And oh. then over here, <laughs> look at that, it's changed a fair bit from one side of the point to the other. And uh, we're pretty close now. This is epic, mate. The scenery around here is just in bloody insane. What are you doing, Charge? You cranky? Cranky pants? You look cranky. Oh, look at that. Wanna catch a Spanish mackerel off the rocks, lads? Let's do it. Look at there, 200 meters, babe, eh? 150 k's from the turn off. And uh, honestly, it, it wasn't that bad. No, I'm surprised. We were expecting a lot, Very lot surprised. worse. And, uh, mate, we oh, killed it. Apart from one I'm... sand dune, I would have towed my caravan out here, eh? Do you know what I actually thought it was? I thought there'd be like big ruts and like, really, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's just corrugations, pretty much. Nothing. So I'm gonna show you a cool spot here, which is right near Steep Point. Sorry about the close up. It's called the oven. You can camp out here on the cliffs here, but come around here and check this out. It's a heap of boys down here, all set up. And what they do is they use big balloons and floats, float baits out off there to catch big Spanish mackerel and stuff. So, pretty cool spot. Like the beach camp where we are back at the landing, that's a lot better for families and stuff. But on a boys trip, if you're after some big fish, man, this place is epic. It's like been at the edge of the world, mate. Or the edge of Australia, I suppose. <laughs> the oven! Big Spaniards, yeah! Yes! <laughs> Made it out to Steep Point. How friggin' epic is this place? It is crazy, mate. We thought the road was gonna be a lot tougher than what it was, but it wasn't, eh? Hey? Just a few bumps, a few corrugations, so I think uh, the best thing to do right now is to grab a froppy and uh, crack one at Steep Point because it's to uh, tick another bucket list item off the list, eh, dear? Have a frothy, Steep Point. What do you reckon, boys? You wanna open that for me? Oh, wait. Thanks, yeah, mate. Yeah. How good's that? I don't know. I don't think I've ever seen this before. The missus serious? is actually making lunch. You are absolutely Come here. I'm joking, I'm joking. Anyway, I just want to give you a quick look at it because we get a few questions about it. Uh, people ask about how's the canopy go with dust and water and everything. So anyway, we just smashed out the useless loop roads. We've done 140 k's of dirt and corrugations. Pulled everything out to have lunch and there's not a whisper of dust anywhere. It's schmick, mate, and everything's still where it should be because it's all lips on the shelves and that. Um, seals here, so you've got like a return on here to stop water, any water coming in. Plus you've got these dust seals and these here are compression locks. So when you do twist the top handle, they pull them in and put pressure on the door. Anyway, I'll show you the other side. Pop this open, and then look at that, all my camera gear and computer stuff. No dust, no nothing. Look, if there was any dust in there, that's just black from the alloy. Um, yeah, I'd be spewing, but there's not. It's clean as a whistle. Bloody good gear. Everything's, this has just slid down a bit, but yeah. there we go. What do you reckon, Charles? How's yeah. that trip out, all right? <laughs> um, I'm just going to pop these swag bags and I'll show you, like I talked about yesterday, there is um, no dust or water in them and they've been sitting up here for uh, probably two months now without being used. So, pretty bloody cool setup. Oh, unclip this one. Undo the end one. And then there's just like a couple of rolls here that roll them off like this. Flick it up. Look at that. Bone dry and clean as a whistle. How sick is that? Check this out for a campsite. What the hell? Oh. Let's set them up, kids. You ready? Watch your heads. I'll chuck them down. Yeah. All right, Got my side 
God, our camp is just behind us. And look at these four. Hey. Oh, what do you got? Fishy. <laughs> Bait. Do you want fishy? No, thank you. <laughs> oh, quick, get it away. <laughs> this is our campsite at the Dirkhartog Barge Landing, which is uh, in Shelter Bay. Check it out, mate. This is insane. We've kicked the swags off here. We're right on the beach with our own little track through here. Spin around. Check this. Giddy up, hey? The awning out. Kitchen ready. Ho, ho, ho. To have your own little beach access like this. Ow. Prickles around, but far out. This is sick. Check this out. Look how many uh, starfish are on the beach here. Look at this. I'm throwing them all in. Like tons. Hey, yeah, how many? There's like hundreds, man. Yeah, is that where oh, his brother already threw one at him? Look at his face. Come here, Jake. Show us your lip. Jeez, he got you good, didn't he? That's the pointy bit. Of the oh, that'll do it every time. Man. I'm, I've got a new cool. name for this place. Yeah. Instead of calling it the, whatever you guys call that, I'm, I'm going to call it Starfish Beach because it actually is Starfish. Good idea. And it is a beach. It is. There you go. Enjoying it? Happy days. Hey, what do you got there? Cider. Mm. Oh, I got Love an Arvo cider. Oh, hey. Jeez, I could get used to this, dear. I oh, know, it's lovely, isn't it? Kind of like we haven't been doing it for three and a half years already. <laughs> <laughs> Weather's perfect. The water temp is unreal. I this need to go is... and have a bath in there soon. <laughs> That's still blowing me away that this is out at Steep Point. I know. Hey? I did not think it was this good. Far out. We need a week out of here, not just one night. Yeah. Hey, I'm loving Steep Point, mate. Third cast, third fish, and this one's a keeper. Look nice at that. Nice Golden Trevally. It's a whole school of Mount I reckon. Once this sun goes down, I reckon these things will double inside. I can't wait, eh? Oh. You reckon? Who's catching the next one? This makes me so happy. Yeah. No, it's me. It's you. I think it's Bill. No, You've, no you caught the first one. Billy, next one's you. Yeah, I didn't catch the first one. <laughs> 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 oh, How's this? A couple of nice slabs of trevally. Uh, the easiest way we find to do it is just to uh, fill them and then skin them. Because then you don't have to worry about scales and I don't like the skin anyway. So we'll keep this one in here. It's like a nice long sharp one. Start at the end here and then just grab him by the tail. Work your way through. Boom. There's the skin. And there. A nice fresh fillet, cut a few bones out, and we bang on. And then I keep sandwich bags in here, slot them in there once we've cut her up. Happy days, mate. You can slap it straight in the fridge. We're just gonna eat this straight up tonight. Fresh Trevor, yes. Show back the difference. <laughs> if you do mess up, just scale the rest of it and have at it. Skin one, aren't you? Dinner on night one, babe. What do we got? How good is it? We're doing fish wraps tonight. So Justin's caught fresh fish. We've just crumbed it up. Cooked it on this bad boy. Hey? Nice and easy. How good is this stuff if you've never used it? This stuff here. It's like fish coating. It's it's like a dollar fifty, and it's the bomb. It's so yummy, hey? So good. Wrap them up. And we'll sit down here and watch the sunset. Far out. Don't Charlie's nude. So. Yeah, I don't. <laughs> I won't pan down. Hmm. Watch it. You got it. What are you having? I'm gluten free, so I can't have the wraps. So I'm just having Sucky. fish and salad. Yeah. Yum. Oh, that's not too bad. Yeah, delicious. How good's this spot? Yeah. Fresh GT off the beach at Steep Point. Winning. How's this for a spot to eat dinner, eh? Look at this. This is insane. You see that in with you lot? Is that alright? Yeah. Welcome, Dad. There's your fish wrap, alright? They're loving it. Mine's bloody awesome. Look at this. Mm. Fresh GT off the beach. Straight into the fry pan. <laughs> hey? Can't get much yeah. better, eh? One night here, and we'll catch the barge from this beach. Straight over to Dirk Hartog. Oh, so insane. Fun. Got another rod out here with a big bait on it, so. It. Maybe we'll get a shark or something bigger. Who knows? But 
me. This is Living Barry. Morning on day two. This is from Steep Point. Look it over at Dirk Hartog. Breaky on the go. The sun's coming up. Oh, yeah. You wake in there, bud, or what? How'd you go? Yeah. Was it sleep in there? Yeah. Hey? <laughs> Ready for some brekkie or what? Yeah? What do you want? Got a bacon eggs hanging like that. Yeah. Geez, you got some wicked swag here, man. <laughs> Again! <laughs> Go on and look at that. Look at that. Check out the sunrise, bud. It's pretty sick, isn't it? I just want to be your morning light. So we have had a bit of a change in plans this morning. We should have been on Dirk Hartog a couple of hours ago, uh, but the barge broke down and started drifting out in the middle of the channel out there. Anyway, it's back up and running uh, on one engine by the looks of it, but we've moved from the, the landing site. He's pulled up with the last car to go across, and we've just moved up to Blackie's Beach, which is another cool little campsite, and uh, he's running. So he's just gonna come back across here now. I don't know if you can see him coming back. Pick us up here, 10, 15 minutes across, and uh, we'll be on to a car talk. <laughs> we should have been halfway up the island by now, but whatever. These things happen. Um, we just had a fish down there this morning. Didn't catch anything, but beautiful spot, eh? If you had to wait it out and be broken down somewhere, this wouldn't be too bloody bad, I'll tell you. But oh, we're going. Ah! What do you reckon? Woo! Barge is coming. Yeah. Finally. Hey, we're going to do a car talk. We're going to do car talk. We're going to do car talk. Do hard talk. Now I got it. Now I got it. Do hard talk. Do car talk. Yeah. Where are we going? Do hard talk. Where are we going? Willy Tarkard. Where are we going? Do Tarkard. Where are we going? Do car talk. Happy days. You done it. The barge, let's get out. Let's go and have a look at this. Giddy up. Hey? On the barge. I didn't know if we were gonna make it or not, but anyway, everyone has their dramas. Check this out. This is Blackie's Beach. You can only just fit one car on here in a camper trailer. Hey? So oh, it'd be good to take a big camper over here, but you've got to be careful. And look at that, look at the colour of this water. This is insane. Sick, eh? How good is that mate? Just oh met Kieran, God. he runs the island over here, he drove the barge over, give us some hot tips as well, but I just got some epic drone footage pulling up on the beach, that is insane. This place mate, is paradise. This is so just mate, crazy. Oh Hang on, I just want to do this. Hey Beck, okay, how do you feel about much. just four nights now, dear? I'm happy with that. Oh, you're so full of it. God, she's a stubborn thing. Sweet days, we made it to Dirk Hartog. First day, uh, we're heading straight up to the top of the island, which is Turtle Bay. It's about 80 k's. Kieran reckons give it three hours to get there. We're a bit later, a bit late than we want to be because of the barge breaking down, but who cares? We're here and it's the most beautiful day you can imagine. So, pretty damn stoked. We'll get up there, we'll show you a bit of stuff along the way, and we'll be in Turtle Bay in about three hours. Giddy up. Whoa. What do you reckon? It's a bit of a ride, eh? 
This is Salty's camp at the homestead. Only about half an hour from where the bars drops us off. We're just gonna stop here for a bit of lunch and the missus ain't feeling too flash from the track. And then we're gonna head that way towards Turtle Bay. But man, we're coming back to stay here on our last night um, before we hit the barge. This is insane. Man. I don't think people know how good Dirk Artog is, otherwise they'd, this would be full. But look at the campsites. Empty, empty, empty. We're in one. Empty, 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 empty. <laughs> Far out. Love it. How do you get a job like this? These blokes run this island. Far out. On a pillow, feet are dangling. The air so thin. My body is shaking, swaying in the wind. Push me in. I'm on the edge, I'm ready to begin. Breathing deep and slow. Our campsite at Turtle Bay. You know, you're not parked right on the beach, but look at that, mate. Far out. You've got the swags on the cliff, ute backed in there. See the sunset over Cape Inscription, the lighthouse. Far out. This is sick. I'll tell you what, I'll take you for a walk down the bottom. There's some pretty cool stuff down there too. The reason it's called Turtle Beach, or Bay, is because all the turtles lay their eggs on it. And there's, you can see the tracks and you can see the nests. So I'm going to take the kids down and we'll have a look, eh? You want to go and see them? Yeah. Righto. Look at that. Look at his tracks. It's been a big one coming up. He's only just come up on the last high tide, Jack. Look at this. You know what he's done? He's come up and he's opened all this up so his little babies can get out. Look at that. Don't walk in there because there'll be eggs in there. Yeah. He would have come up here on the high tide remembering where he laid it, hit the rocks and gone, oh, maybe not. And he's made his way around and then found his nest over here. And he's gone around and un uncovered all the sand so his little ones can get out. So we might have missed it by day, but I reckon if I come down here at night time tonight with a torch, we might see a few more come up. I'm gonna put my chef hat on, a camp chef that is. Simple meals mate when you're on the road. Take some tuna with you, doesn't matter what it is as long as it's a big can, spring water, olive oil. Uh, well, we're cooking it for the kids so make sure it's not some spicy shit. But um, that and uh, a bag of that, um, or just a sachet of that microwave brown rice. Cook it up in a fry pan like this, that's it. You can add some three veg if you want, you know, like pea, corn and carrot out of the freezer. Chuck that in there until it's hot. Serve them that with a bit of barbie sauce. It is mint, mate. I eat it with hot sauce, like that Frank's hot sauce, or Tabasco, and kids love it with barbie. Cheapest chips, cost you like three bucks for a meal. No, wouldn't be. be. Four bucks for a tin of tuna, dollar fifty for a thing of rice. Five dollars fifty, feed three kids. Easy as. We use an induction cooktop, this fella here. I'll take the pan off it. This is it here. And it works an absolute treat off uh, the inverter. So there's the inverter hidden in there. Schmicko set up by old mate at Pro Touring. Hey, I tell you, if you ever want to get something done to your truck, get Caleb to do it, because it's insane, mate. Pro Touring concepts. Anyway, look at this. No gas, battery cook up at Turtle Bay. Like you cannot, unless you go to Cape Inscription, which is the lighthouse, you cannot get further west than this. This is pretty cool. And we're on our own. You can only get one person in here at a time. You book it, and they only allow one side. Mate, epic. What do you reckon? Tuna and brown rice, you love it, don't you? <laughs> Good um, face, mate. I love you, Sitting down here having a few frothies and just chilling out. This is pretty damn like horrible plastic bug. <laughs> <laughs> She's all class, mate. Yeah. Hey? That's why I love her. Um, swag's up here on the cliff. You would set up. Bit of gunners. Is that gunners in the back there? Sweet child of mine. A bit of music, crying kids, like, yeah, couldn't get much better. Starry nights 
she's watching. We're erased, reminded. Hot diggity. Come on, donkey. Midnight calls, the wind comes in through windows and old walls. She says time is a rerun of playing God for a season. We go down to the river. Good morning. Hey, day two on Durkartog Island. Best time of the day for me is coffee time. So we're at Turtle Bay. I'll bang this on and I'll take you up and show you the uh, sunrise this morning. Oh, that's the good stuff. Now, come and check out this, just up here over the dune. Oh, you can see the sun's coming up on these cliffs down here. That's sick, eh? Anyway, this is pretty special. Come for a walk up here. Little track up through here. And then, Check it, check it, check it. Look at that, eh? Oh. <sighs> this is cool, hey. I'm the only one up. No one else bothers to get up for sunrise. I don't know why. It's so bloody beautiful. But, you know the best part about this joint is? I'll spin slowly. <laughs> All right, the last few vids I've been doing this. Okay, stop spinning, it makes us sick when we watch it. So, anyway. Best part about this joint is that we're the only ones here. And if you book this place, you will be the only ones here because they only take one booking. National Park campsite, oh, 22 bucks a night, something like that. Oh, pretty cool, hey. Just to be, I don't know, so remote. Westernmost point of Dunkar Tog, just out there. Sun went down over the water. Sun's coming up over the water. I don't think I've seen that before. That's pretty cool. Love it. Well, today, give you a bit of a wrap. We're going to Withnor Point, which isn't too far down the road. Uh, we're gonna base ourselves there and just cruise around, hang out on the beach, fish, swim. Um, maybe go for a drive, I don't know. The thing with driving around here, the missus was fed up. Yesterday, by the time we got here, uh, with how rough the tracks were and <laughs> how long it was taking, so I think it's going to be hard to convince her to go day tripping all around the joint because it's just rough and it's hard on the gear too. So we might just work our way back, camp, enjoy it, have a bit of fun. What do you want, lads? Baked beans or pancakes? Pancakes. Sure. Yeah. Every yeah. morning, yeah. Is pancakes. You don't want the old fart man? No. no. It's pancakes. What are you watching? It's cool, man. I'm pretty comfy in this. Okay, day two on Durkar Talk. We're leaving Woo. our campsite at Turtle Bay and we're heading back uh, up the track. We're going to Cape Inscription where there's a lighthouse on the end. Still a working lighthouse. Uh, it looks pretty epic on the end of these red sandy cliffs. And so. it's only about 5Ks from where we stayed last night. That's it. So plan for today. Go and check that out. Then just scoot back about 12Ks to our next campsite, Whitnell Point. I just want to get in the water. It's stinking hot. It's like epic weather. <laughs> we just want to swim. It's ah, the best. And there's fish busting up out the front. Hopefully we can... Uh, they come past us at Whitnell and I can get the drone out there and drop something on them. And the water tank is the best. Oh, it's sick, mate. So, so good. Easy day today, nice cruisy. We're not fanging across these tracks trying to make it to camp. Uh, it's just going to be fun. Let's go and check it out. This is Cape Inscription, the lighthouse. Here she is over here, and then behind us is the old lighthouse quarters. Pretty cool history, just reading that there. It was built and uh, occupied in 1910, and then they automated the lighthouse in 1917 and everyone moved out. So it's been restored, and that looks pretty cool in there. And then um, here's the lighthouse. And somewhere, I think it's up here, old mate Dirk Hartog left like a brass um, plate inscripted of when he got here. So we'll go and find that, and I'm guessing that's why it's called Cape Inscription. <laughs> Let's go, Jack. You're going to be the first one to read it? Yeah. Adam. 
And here it is. This is a pewter dish that Dirk Hartog left here and he inscribed it with his arrival and departure dates. So there's a full thing on the back there that tells you what it's all about. Pretty crazy, eh? Good history here. Beautiful. Awesome spot. I don't know how he got, got himself up here. <laughs> Bloody hell. Scrambled up the rocks. <laughs> <laughs> He's done well. He's a fit bugger. Here's a bit of a hot tip if you didn't know. Uh, when you do your tire pressures, like if you're starting the day, uh, to do a 4 track and you got cold tyres and then you drop your tyres to what you think would be right at 15. By the time you get half hour down the track, shaking and bumping and all that, and your tyres heat up, then your pressure goes up as well. So like now, I dropped mine this morning to 16 before we hit the track. Just pulled up to check them, they are up around 24 psi. So drop them back down again to 16 because it's pretty rough corrugated road. but. Make sure you check them out because they do heat up and um, that hot air makes a big difference to the pressure of your tyres. So. Check it out, our campsite at Whitnell Point. This is insane. We are out here on the end of the point, all set up. Swags are done and dusted. Got the awning out, hey? It, what time is it, babe? It's like three in the arvo, maybe. Yeah, eat that. Been down here, got some fish already for dinner. We've had a swim for ages. This is just out of control. It's probably one of the best campsites. <laughs> We've got like, honestly, we've got the best of both worlds. Like if you take out the point, we've got like 320 degrees probably yeah. of water views all the way around but us. But the thing is, the reef is just there. Yeah. Like, reef and then safe swimming everywhere. Just amazing, eh? We're Kids have... loved it. Look at this. Swags, we get to sleep here, wake up here. Fresh fish for dinner, babe. We're going to have uh, sunrise and sunset here. Again. Again. I'll tell you what, we're getting pretty spoiled. Anyway, while we're here, Thought I'll give you a quick rundown of the swags. Uh, we've done a vid on them before. We've used them a fair bit, but we get heaps of questions about them. So anyway, I'll take you through. So what they are, they are ARB Sky Dome double swags. I'll start at the foot end and work your way through. These ones are massive. They do singles and they do doubles. We keep them on the roof in the cargo gear bags. They're up here. They stay on the roof, clipped on, and that these straps actually secure it to the rhino rack. So it never has to come off. The swags just go in and out and they're always dust and waterproof. Um, easy to put together with these clip together poles. There's three bow poles along the center and then two long ones that uh, sort of space it apart and provide tension. You can use a rope and pull these out and pull it even tighter if you want. It's got um, eyelets in the corners for pegging them down. There's airflow at either end. So you've got full like midgy mesh, foot end, head end, and then both these massive sky dome windows. Fully waterproof, we've had them in crazy weather and uh, not a drop mate. When we did get them though, brand new, I wet them in properly, like uh, weathered them, like hosed them a few times in the sun, let them relax and shrink and, and uh, sort of fill up all those stitching holes and that to make it fully waterproof. And we have not had a drop of water in them since. Me and the missus have got them down to about, I don't know, what do you reckon babe? About two and a half, three minutes to put up a swag now? Yeah, we're pretty quick. Yeah, and the kids help as well. Easy as, I think, they weigh about 15 or 16 kilos, all rolled up. So um, there's a bit of weight in them, but when you take into account, like if you wanted to pack a tent, mattresses, sleeping bags, all that other snot, like it's a lot easier. And uh, I don't know, for us, it's a lot more um, enjoyable 
to go in the swags and carry a tent and all that other stuff. So uh, anyway, I'll open them up and show you inside. Big zippers. These things are sick, mate. We've been sleeping with the, um, oh, there's just the fly screen on so we can see the moon and the stars at night. Inside there's heaps of cool little attachments. There's little hooks up here to clip things on. This end here unzips there. You've got little pockets down here for lights and car keys and phones. Some more on that side over there. And then swing around, so much room in here. And then down, oh, the, all these little clips here, they um, roll up and you can tie the fly screen up and tie the canvas up. You come down to the foot end, you've got another one. Full midgy mesh, and there's a rain flap on the outside if you want to pull that out. So, always got heaps of airflow. Sometimes you get like super stuffy in swags because you don't get any air in. These ones, mate, if, most of the time we've got to pull the canvas down because there's so much fly screen that like you start getting a bit cold. But anyway, these are bloody good. The mattresses are comfy, they're like nearly a double mattress inside. And um, there's a cool feature if I can show you. Whoever carries a, a Cobra with them, open that one. In goes your Kiwi, down there. Pull this strap over. Look at that. <laughs> Somewhere to hold your hat for the night. And if you wanted to fold that out, it'll still stay in there like that, and you can put your boots under there too, keep them dry. How wicked's that? Anyway, that's our swags. Sky Dome doubles. How good are they, bub? We love them. Normally it's three kids in the one, me and the squeeze in the other, and then. Uh, they just live constantly on the roof there. Whenever we need them, we can go camping, chuck them down, it's no drama. So we get a lot of questions too. People say, is it worth taking them? Um, you know, is it worth hanging on to them and carrying them all the way around the countryside? Well, we don't use them that much, but I mean, when we do, far use out. Them. If we didn't have the swags, we would not be able to come to a place like this. No, that's right. Yeah. And check out where we are. Yeah. Wowee. We? So, We've used it on some epic trips, Yeah, we? but I reckon, who cares if they sit on the roof for like Close. two or three months without getting used? Who cares? Yeah. Because then when we do want to come away, we can come in. They're, they're there. They're ready to roll. There you go. How good's that? So all we have to do is chuck pillows in. That's it. The best that's it. Anyway, that's our swags. Got a bit of a treat for you. Spin around, check this out. This is sunset at Whitnall Point. Oh, how good is it? Amazing. <laughs> this is epic, mate. What a setup. This is brilliant. A few tunes on, sun going down, oh man, and then look at that, if that's there, if I do like a full 180, this is where it'll come up over here. Ha. Man, we are getting dead set spoiled over here at DHIA. I'm going to call it that now because I reckon I should be one of the locals. Shower time, hey, what does everyone else use? We still haven't really figured out the best option for us to run with a camp shower, but this works a treat, mate. The old drink bottle. 600 mil, grab the lid, just get a knife and punch like, I don't know, 10 holes in it or something. Fill it up three quarters of the way with cold water and then just boil the kettle, top him up with boiling water, or not quite boiling water, otherwise the bottle shrinks, but anyway. That'll do, screw the lid on, give it a shake, we are good to go. We all have one of those, so what's that? Five times six, three litres of water, to shower all of us, give it a shake. So that's our shower, we'd love to hear some better options because don't know what to use. Don't want to carry too much because you don't use it too often, but it'd be nice to have a long hot shower some nights. Um, this works for me. If I get to uh, sponge bath the business. Let's go, dear. <laughs> Good morning, day three on Dirk Hartog, and we are at this beautiful place, Whitnall Point. We showed you it yesterday, but sunrise here this morning was absolutely outstanding, mate. It was so, like, just orange coming up over here. Got some great photos and listened to some tunes while we had a coffee sitting here watching it come up, but I'm just about to go down here on the edge of the reef. There's like a bit of a drop off. You can walk out there. I'm gonna go for a fish, see if I can't grab something. I was snorkeling out there yesterday and um, managed to spear a few fish um, for dinner so that's pretty cool there's fish everywhere some big snapper as well walk out the edge throw a bit of bait out and see what happens but don't get much better than this no wind beautiful day another hour here fishing then we'll pack up and slowly make our way back towards the homestead check out the sand dunes check out a couple other campsites 
And then we'll rock up there. We've got all, all our remaining alcohol in the fridge. Grog, wine, cider. Ready for a big night at the homestead. So good, mate. Hey? Can't even bloody catch a fish out here. He's <laughs> Dampier's Landing. So this is where 1699 on the 17th of August, William Dampier rode ashore. Gonna go over the beach here. Bloody soft sand access getting in so you might want to make sure your tyres are right down. We're just gonna duck over here, have a look at the beach. The water here looks insane. So, so the sign back there has a big caution and says do not explore alone. So guess what we're doing? Hey, it's what we do. Oh, Aussie Adventure! Hey, check this out. Look uh, at that! What? Blue water! Oh. That is crazy! Oh, my lordy lord. We're just lucky, though. Yeah. We better take some heat of that sign. We won't go too far down this beach because it's bloody soft, but man, how's that for a view? Hello, right, driving into Sandy Point. This is another epic moment, check it. Uh, everywhere you go here is just insane. Look Amazing. at the color of the water. Yeah, just the whole island is like that. Oh. And you can camp here. We could have just camped here at night. We should have just camped right Oh there. man, what an epic campsite. You can literally just camp on the beach right here. Oh. How good is this? You can actually bloody camp here. If you want absolute beachfront, this is your spot. Check it out. <sighs> Honestly, this is insanity. Like, Sandy Point Camp. Man. Oh, we're demo. Oh, not really. It's we like had a pretty damn good spot last night. But wow. Oh, it's so good. Look how flat that water is. It's crazy. Like, Set the swags up right here, I reckon, under the awning. Oh, oh my god. This mate. place just gets better and better. I told you, dear, I told you we needed more than four nights, and she wouldn't bloody listen to me. Uh, You're regretting it now. A little bit. <laughs> Where are we, Dal? Here we are, Louisa Bay. Again. <laughs> This place just continually blows our socks off. Look at that. Like, this is another campground, so. Can you imagine camping on that? Oh, it's about half an hour from oh the homestead. God. And it is just insane. Stunning. Do you want to stop for lunch? I reckon. What yeah. do you reckon? Sausage sizzle for lunch? Snags and bread for lunch. I love beef sausages except for chicken. Oh, sorry, mate. We've only got chicken snags. That's mum's issue because they're gluten free. Anyway, look at this. What is it, Chaz? Oh, silly cross eyes. Got some snaggles for lunch. Man. Check out our view. This is epic. Justin just needs to catch fish. Me? Yeah. yeah. Just threw this out while we're cooking lunch. I don't know what it is. It's got a bit of a pump. Probably a shovel nose or something. But oh, see if we can't get him in. Giddy up. Yep, yep. <laughs> yeah. If you would have tons of fish off. Have you seen him yet? Nah. Oh, he's fucking oh. up. Oh. Fucker. What was that? A shark, I reckon. What do you reckon it was? Oh. What have been a shovey? I don't know. Shovey. Shark, probably. It's a bit more. A shovey. What have you been a shovey? Hey. <laughs> Took me hooks. That's 80 pound leader. You rub through, chomp. Bugger. Dude. We're just heading back to the homestead and we come past the dunes, right? There's a big sign there that says, caution, super soft sand. Anyway, 
I spot these two tracks up here and I'm like, oh, someone's trying to go up there. It must get pretty soft. But oh, I'll just cruise up and see what it's like. Look at this right beside it. Bang. As soon as you get off that edge, it just <laughs> plows in like that. Look at that. Lucky I didn't try and get a run up, babe. I would have just smashed into it. Hey? She's just shaking her head at me. Like, what are you doing? Look at that. How soft does that get? That's insane. Far out. <laughs> like a snow player. Anyway, I won't be driving up that June, that's for sure. Some serious sand dunes here on the way back to the homestead. Check out this. <laughs> hey, what a ridge line. This is epic, man. Flip it around. What do you reckon? So good. Look You're going to surf down at me. Oh, the crack. How's that behind it, but Look how blue that water is. So amazing. Oh. What a spot, hey? This bloody is windy. So cool. It is bloody windy. So back at the homestead, we've just pulled up at our campsite. We are in number 18. There's, I don't know, probably 20 or so sites here, but they are all beachfront, all magic. Starting up there, the homestead and the bar and a couple of tents. You come down this way, there's a camp kitchen as well, toilets and showers. And look at our spot. Holy, this is men. There's another, like a group booking site here called Buddy's Camp. Anyway, we're just loving this, mate. Swag set up on the dune. Kids are stoked playing sand castles uh, and you can have a fire. This is the only place in the island you can have a fire. So we've got a little fire pit there, a bit of firewood. And we are just going to kick back, have a few bevies and enjoy this sunset. What do you reckon about salties? Oh my God. Hey? Look at that. This is crazy. What the hell? And you can have fires here. How good's that? Uh, Cali Tim's out there with the fire truck. Seems to be a lot of like mullet getting around here too. It is just Fish. amazing, mate. The whole island has been beautiful, we've loved it. All right, what's been your favorite part about Dirk Hartog? Um, I reckon uh, doing the sand dunes. So what was your favorite part about Dirk Hartog? Setting up the swags. Setting up the swags, yeah? You're pretty good at it, aren't you? What's been your favorite part about Dirk Hartog? Mm. Right, oh, no, Becky Booby. What's been your favourite? What did you call me? Becky Booby. Oh what's, what's your favourite part about Dirk Hartog? Oh, the shower I just had. <laughs> After four nights camping, i loving the homestead here. It is gorgeous, torts, showers. But no, that is not my favourite part. It has been the remote campsites. Like when you can pull your tent or sorry, your swag up right on the dune there with ocean views. Sunset, sunset, sunrise over here. Should we go? It's been good, eh? So good. You know what I thought you would have said? What? Is that my husband like set up, pack up, bought food, cook food? Well. And I just live like a. Well, queen. That, you wanted to come over here, so that was your <laughs> was your thing, like. Honestly, I, I think she expected me to bring a palm frond and some grapes and hand feed oh, them to her as well. For goodness' sake, I did not. But this was your trip. Like you wanted to come over, so it was your. You know, you, oh, I'll remember that. You next like, time you, you want to go it somewhere, all, and that's fine. There's plenty of places I've planned. Yeah, right. On. So, mm. can you name one off the top of your head? Red Bluff. You haven't planned that. Well, I'm about to. 
<laughs> so I'm going to tell you my favourite part about Dirk Hartog. And, um, well, it's not really just one thing, actually. It's bloody everything. To be able to come over here and be on such a remote ah! island, like the westernmost point of Australia. You know, most people go to Steep Point and that's it. We've gone the extra mile. We've come over here. Barge Oval was epic. The scenery we got there, there's dolphins playing around. The water's that blue. The campsite over there at Steep Point. And then to get over here and just traverse this island and like check out all the landscapes that it has to offer and be the only ones at the campsites. Like we had every place to ourselves, apart from this one. We were at the homestead, which is, I think, a bit of a base camp for everyone. But mate, Turtle Bay on our own, Whitnell Point on our own, because we moved. There was another person there, but they were at least a few hundred metres away. And then the campsites we went to today, Sandy Point, uh, Louisa Bay, no one there. Mate, it was just insane. Like, absolutely loved it. For me, well worth the trip out, well worth coming over here, planning it, coming to see it. And experience it because I have not ever seen anything like this and I can pretty much guarantee that I probably will, will never see it again traveling Oz because it's just one of a kind and you have to do it when you're over here and that's my favorite part about Dirk Bartok. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, well morning again, it's day four, sunrise at Salty's camp on Dirk Hartog. I'll go and see what the kids are up to. Are they watching a vid? Hey, how'd you sleep last night, alright? Good. Good? How'd you sleep? And Not good. And Why is that? <laughs> how did you sleep, Phil? Uh, good. Good? I reckon you slept awesome because everyone stayed in here. No one bothered me and mum last night. How good's that? Except Charlie bothered me. Oh, did she? What did she do? She's like, light. Light. Oh, yeah, she light. does ask for a light all light. the time, doesn't she? Light. Yeah, because I needed to, I, I needed to find my zip so I could zip <coughs> myself up. Oh, that's fair enough. Yeah, right Light. Cool. Anyway, what a great spot, hey? The weather is mint again. Apparently it's supposed to blow up today, so we had to just send a message to see whether it's worth bugging out today. If he's still going to run the barge in the morning, if it's super windy. <laughs> Going home today because the weather's turned pretty bad. Might have been a mad trip. <laughs> right on, here we go. Dirk Hartog, off it goes. See you, mate. What a legend. Ah, done and dusted, mate. Useless Loop Road, Steep Point, Dirk Hartog. What a friggin' awesome trip, mate. Like, seriously, had the best time. Anyway, uh, I'm off to Carnarvon to replace every bit of suspension in this ute because that road was rough as well.